Well, what we're looking at here is an existing floor, and I'm not going to draw an entire house. I don't need to to make my point in this video. But you can see here that the floor joists do not have any holes drilled through them at all for plumbing pipes. But this one here does. And whether this is an existing building, you're drilling the pipes through, it's new construction. I've seen this in new construction. I've seen it in remodel projects. And it basically applies to both of the situations. And I'm going to kind of give you a couple of ideas here that might provide you with a better alternative than doing this. And some of the ideas might not be possible. So this might, if this is all you're stuck with and you want the bathroom and you're going to let the plumber go in and butcher up some of the Joyce, at least you can understand after you've watched the video that you are going to be weakening the, the Joyce. They are going to be, they're not going to be as strong as they were. And I know that some people would say, no, you're allowed to do this. It says it in a book. An engineer says it. I got it. I've also seen joists like these. You were allowed to drill the holes through. They weren't very big next to a knot or the lumber had a defect in it or there was too much weight on top of the floor and these joists split. They broke. They couldn't take the weight and it became a problem. So just because an engineer tells you you can do something, and I'm not saying this, don't get me wrong, this is not in every situation. If an engineer says, hey, you're gonna need a 32 inch by eight inch glue lamb beam to hold up a single story ridge or something like that, yeah, that might be a little overkill. You're not gonna ever have any problems with it, you know. But for a situation where you pick up a book, you go on the internet, you read something, and it says, yeah, you're allowed to do this, and you just accept that, fine, but you're going to have to put a little common sense to it. And that's kind of the point I'm making here. So, you know, I don't care where the holes are. You're going to be creating a weaker structural member. And especially if these holes are positioned in the wrong spots, maybe next to some large knots, cracks, or something that's going to speed up the process of having this crack. Now, if you just drill a two inch hole through a two by 12, and I think the building code says that you can't drill within the upper two inches or bottom two inches of the joist. No drilling any holes in this area. And the hole cannot be a larger than one third the height of the joist. So if we have a two by 12, 11 and a half inches, then we're probably looking at about three and three quarters of an inch to our maximum size hole that we can drill through there, which is going to be fine for a three inch pipe. You should be able to get that to go through a two by 12 as long as you don't have to drill it in the area, as I said, two inches from the top, two inches from the bottom. And according to the building code book that I got this information out of, it didn't say how many holes you could drill through here. But this is where we got to kind of stop in and say, hey, let's use some common sense here. Can I drill five holes right next to each other in the center? Can I, can I do it on the side? How is it going to affect it? Can I put a large bathtub on top of this area, you know, that's going to be heavy once I fill it up with water? You know, these are things if you're not going to hire a professional or you're hiring, hiring a professional that you're going to end up questioning, this is when I step into the picture. People watch my videos and then they send me pictures of what happened after their contractor went in and butchered everything up. And if you do, you drill these holes in, you have too many holes, you got a weak floor, you're going to have to take all the plumbing out and either replace the joist or install some new joist right next to the damaged joist to fix this thing. This alternative right here isn't something I think I would do. If you're just going to be drilling through two joists, that might not be a problem. But these people that are sending me pictures are drilling through five or six joists and they're running, you know, each joist probably has three holes in it. And the holes that you just seen here are nice and neat. That is not what most plumbers are going to be doing. Now the first alternative I want to provide you with will be to drop the ceiling and install the plumbing underneath the existing floor joist. So this will be a drop ceiling. I think seven foot is the minimum that you're allowed to have in a room, the minimum height. You would need to check with your local building department for that. And again, this is just an, an idea. If this isn't going to work for you, you know, you want the ceiling to be the same height, you're just going to have to find another way. Now, if you do have to notch the joist or the ceiling joist, you can always add, we used to uh, put two by fours like this. We would nail it to the floor joist 
and then nail it to the ceiling joist because there might be situations where you're going to cut the entire ceiling joist to go around the pipes. You're going to want to raise the ceiling as high as you can and you might need to remove a section of it. If that's the case, then something like this might work for you and just kind of throwing, throwing it out there. Another idea to help you get the ceiling as high as you possibly can and while the joist, while the plumbing are underneath the floor joist, just kind of giving out, you know, maybe you can drill some holes through the ceiling joist, of course, and not the floor joist. And when you do put this on here, you got to understand you are going to be putting additional weight onto ceiling joist. This is going to be pr producing additional weight. How much weight? I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal, but you know, you just got to keep in mind it is going to be some. And you know, will it be better than drilling the holes through the pipes, through the uh, floor joist? I think so. So, Another view of it there. Only problem with this thing we have right here is that the shower trap is sticking out of the ceiling, which means we might need to lower the ceiling a little bit. So here I just lowered the ceiling a few inches. I removed the floor joist to give you an idea. Now when I lowered the ceiling a little bit, and the other ones, you remember that the pipes were going through the joist. If you lower the ceiling, it's going to encroach on your headroom in here. You know, if you're six foot five inches, this might not be a good idea. You know, if you're five foot five inches, this is going to be awesome. You're never going to have a problem with it. Ceiling joists might not need to be notched as much if it's lower because it's not going to be in the way of some of the pipes. So you can see here where this one here is going to have to notch. You know, you might have to notch some of these, but you won't have to notch as many as if it was the ceiling was higher. And again, I got I used two by six in my example here for the ceiling joist. You might be able to use two by four also, or even a two by twos, or even a T-bar ceiling. Another thing to consider would be to install a new drain pipe. Remember, we were over here and we had to drill through all of these joists especially with the larger pipe. If, if you could somehow install a new one and you can create something like this, we've only had to drill through two of the joists. A lot better than drilling through all the ones we drilled over here and uh, the holes. Now, the only thing with this is that you are going to need to tie it into the sewer or to a drain underneath the house, underneath the foundation, or going on the outside of the house and around the house to the drain located somewhere either in the front or the backyard wherever it is located. So this could be a problem with a concrete foundation. Might not even be an option with a concrete foundation. A wood framed floor might be. So it's something that works great. If not, go back to the drawing board and you might have to drill through all these joists or use the drop ceiling. So just kind of giving you an idea of how the plumbing would work here. The sink here is going to be a drain. The vent for the toilet would be here. And of course we could have used this as a vent for the toilet also. So the drain, the water is going to be draining this way for the sink. And then this is going to be a vent. The air is going to be kind of going this way or coming, traveling however it wants to go in and out of here. But to make sure that we do not pull the pull the water out of the trap in the sink with the well, every time you flush the toilet that's what the vent's going to be doing shower coming in here the vent for the shower would be here here is some things that i noticed while reading online forums about plumbing and this might be a forum where you go in and you post your problem and then plumbers provide you with suggested repair or installation methods and it's a great way to gather information however i have to warn you that some of the information you're going to gather is not going to be correct so I'll always refer back to your local building codes and i understand that all of these people are looking for plumbing information. They're trying to get the plumbing in their home to either work better or meet local building codes. However, some of the damage that they do to the floor framing might not meet local building codes. And in some cases, the plumbing will need to be modified and new floor joists will need to be installed because some of these people are just hacking away at their floor joists. And why wouldn't you think it's okay if you've seen it on hundreds of pictures all over the internet? And I get it, you wanna add a second story bathroom or fix some of the outdated plumbing that you have in your house and you have 
two by six floor joist or even two by eight floor joist. And in my opinion, this just sends a clear signal to everybody that you're allowed to do it. Now the building codes usually allow you to drill a hole in between the upper two inches and lower two inches of the joist with a maximum diameter of one third the height of the joist. And you're usually going to be allowed to notch one sixth of the overall height out of the top or bottom of the joist. And you can't cut any notches in the center one third of the joist. However, this does not apply to drilling holes. You're allowed to drill holes in this area. So if I have a two by six floor joist, I'm allowed to cut just a little bit less than an inch, unless the floor joist is actually six inches high. Then you can cut an inch notch out of it. And usually the width of the notch cannot be more than one third of the height, suggesting that the notch for a two by six, that is five and a half inches tall, will need to be a little bit under an inch and cannot be wider than one and three quarter inches. And you can see here with our three inch plumbing drain pipe, it isn't going to work too well for this entire project here. And I remember one time looking at a photograph of a dog driving a car and a woman with a striking body crossing the street in the crosswalk. And it said, did you notice the dog driving the car? And I didn't at first because I was too busy looking at the woman. And that's the same situation we're dealing with here. And we really need to keep in mind that if the house falls down because of the huge notches in the floor joist, it really won't matter just exactly how well we installed the plumbing. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, let us know by hitting the thumbs up button or letting us know in the comment area.